We're going to go over the new X2T uh, replacement for the X1. Uh, I know everybody was surprised when they had a replacement for this one. Um, and basically it's for the pass-through uh, for the flash. And I mean, it's a nice unit. It's the same basic concept and design as the X1 with a few extra features, um, good or bad. It's basically the same form factor that we had before with the X1. Um, maybe a little fatter and a little bit bigger. It does utilize a USB-C input instead of the USB micro. Um, and they did remove the plastic cover that was on the X1. Other than that, it's, it's pretty much the same design um, with the addition of added buttons on top for direct access to your groups, uh, which makes it very easy. But one of my biggest gripes is this hot shoe uh, connection, which is plastic, unlike on my strobes for Sony, they're a metal hot shoe connection. And considering it's made for a pass-through, having all that weight on a piece of plastic just doesn't work for me. Um, I, I actually broke uh, uh, two X1s on that, uh, that mount. Um, so I really have an issue with that. Uh, you know, if you're going to do an upgrade and to forget something like that, it's kind of ridiculous. And as far as the buttons, you just touch them and move the bottom wheel uh, that they added. They took it away from the side and added it in the bottom and uh, adjust your uh, um, strobes individually. It works well. Um, it's quick and easy. So yeah, that I like. Um, the infrared autofocus assist, as in the old one, doesn't work on the Sonys. I don't know about any other cameras, but yeah, that doesn't work at all. Um, form factor the, to the Pro, I mean, I, I love the Pro. I, I don't have the two, but I, I do like this unit. I don't like that it sticks up as high as it does, you know, because obviously I, I break things. Um, uh, this one I haven't broke yet, thank God, but, um, you know, it's a nice, uh, I mean, if you like that low profile and you need the pass through, again, you, you know, given the fact that it's a plastic shoe mount, um, you know, it's, uh, uh, I'm sure it's, it'll have use for people. Uh, but I would personally never use it with a pass-through uh, just because of that plastic shoe. Now, they did add um, Bluetooth on here for an app. Um, and, uh, I mean, I can't imagine ever using this app with this unit. Um, there's just, I, I, can't, there, I can't figure out a single reason why you would need to use this app, honestly. Uh, if this is on top of your camera, why are you going to pull out your app and adjust the lights when you have it right there um, at your fingertips? And the app is not exactly um, friendly uh, and, and intuitive. It's, uh, it's actually difficult to change, um, even with a swipe. I mean, you have to swipe per... Like, you can't just run your finger and, and change the um, the level of light uh, just by swiping, which would make sense to me. It's every swipe is another step. Um, the plus or minus will take you up by thirds, I believe it is. Um, but, you know, to me, it's um, it's a gimmick more than anything else. Um, I just, I don't foresee myself ever using it. Um, I'll just let you watch me fumble on this thing for a little bit before I move on. Um, you know, I would, like I said before, I'd just rather use the buttons and, and go right to it with the bottom wheel. You know, with the device that's right on top of your camera, um, it's pretty easy to use. I would just think that you would be able to go swipe right across and go from all the way down, all the way up in one swipe. It just doesn't work that way. Rather than just grabbing this wheel and turning it. So, yeah, the gimmick is there, but, you know, is it worthwhile? I, I, don't, I don't think so. Um, I, I, like I said, I, don't buy it for that if you're buying it for the Bluetooth accessibility. Now, the other issue that this the X1 had um, was misfires. And... You put your flash anywhere near close to this uh, unit, and it just misfires, as you can see here. Um, it, it has to be far away. Now, I handheld handhold my flash a lot on events if I'm doing close-up work. And I, I, you know, don't get me wrong, I love the Flashpoint Godox systems uh, for casual work, but for a job, 
you know, the misfires and, and some of the issues, the overheating that I have with them. I, I don't normally take them on, on paid jobs. But, you know, for this fact alone, um, if you're doing close-up work or you need the flash close to the camera, it's going to misfire. Now, with the Pro, they fix that. I think the only time I can get it to misfire is um, if I'm actually touching uh, the flash to the Pro unit, um, you know, physically touching it. It'll stop, as you see here. Um, but, you, you know, a quarter inch away, it just fires every time, um, which, you know, surprises me with the uh, X2. Uh, I, I thought they would have fixed that, but no, it is not fixed. You will get misfires if you're anywhere close or at a you know, at the right angle with the flash and the unit. Uh, so that's basically it. Um, it's $59, I believe. Take it or leave it. And of course I had to go out and do a shoot with the uh, new X-T2 uh, just to see how it performed on location. And a as you would expect, it performed fine. Um, we had two AD200 set up in the soft box. I had the old 360 sitting on the floor behind the, the model, and then I had two of the flashpoint units, um, uh, the, well, the, the little speed lights. And it's amazing that my age, I can't remember the name of these things, uh, but two of the um, flashpoint zoom lithium ions uh, way against the wall, uh, pointing up at the wall. and. Uh, the only time I had a misfire is when the camera went to sleep, and of course the, uh, the X-T2 uh, sleeps with the camera, um, or shortly after, and you know, I, took a, I, I took a shot right after it went to sleep, and that was an issue, but other than that, it worked fine.